In the 7 o'clock news on CNC3, I'm Ria Rambali. I'm Jesse Ramli. Ryan Beachu has the evening off. I am Jasper Marie with Sport. And I'm Clay Nussain with your weather. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. Career banker gets the nod to head the Integrity Commission. Prison officer shot and killed in Arima last evening. A man known to police is found dead in Old Grange, Tobago. Coming up in sport, arbitrators dress down the SSFL's registration and disciplinary procedures over the league's handling of the Maruga Secondary and Miracle Ministries issues. Rainfall is forecast to return this weekend, especially on Sunday. How much rain we're expecting? I'll have the details in tonight's weather forecast. Hayden Gittens, the newly appointed chairman of the Integrity Commission, is hoping to make a difference to the office. And while the commission's former chairman is also optimistic, political scientist Dr. Bishnu Raghunath is cautioning that the body's objectivity must be maintained. With more than 40 years' experience in the financial sector serving in various capacities, Hayden Gittens on Friday added one more portfolio under his belt. The newly sworn-in chairman of the Integrity Commission says he's ready for the tasks ahead of the independent body. I feel very proud of the fact that, that, that um, I have an opportunity to hopefully make a difference in, in this important realm and I look forward to the challenge that lies ahead. Gittins replaces Professor Rajinder Ramlogan, whose two-year tenure in office was marked by fallouts with Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley over decisions to investigate him. Recently, Dr. Rowley lashed out at Ramlogan. The former chairman had alleged the institution was forced to operate with reduced budgets. Gittins said his predecessors will assist as he navigates forward. This was task and responsibilities to meet with this, the, the, the uh, Board of Commissioners, which will be done early next week, and meet with the staff um, and have that kind of engagement. And uh, coming out of the meetings, uh, there will, certainly there will be clarity on, on the way ahead. I will kind of um, certainly have the, the efforts of previous chairman to kind of fall behind and to... And to, and to lean on. The former chairman endorsed Gittins in his new role. I certainly wish him all the best. The yeah. country needs the commission to continue to do its work. And um, I, yeah, I wish him, I certainly wish him all the best. And given the recent wranglings at the commission, political scientist Dr. Bishnu Raghunath says steering towards impartiality is a path it must maintain. What I could say, however, is that whoever is the chairman of the integrity commission has to operate in a manner that will suggest and give the, uh, the outlook that they are not being politically driven and rather they are going to take on the responsibility of ensuring uh, integrity and investigations are conducted in a manner in which um, they are deserving. Dr. Ragunas contended that there should be no political interference and that transparency must be paramount. Residents of the Lengua Indian Walk District will not be heading back to the polls just as yet as the UNC has filed its appeal over the dismissal of its election petition. In the appeal, the party raised 11 grounds under which they claimed High Court Judge Marissa Robertson was wrong to dismiss the petition on Wednesday. The UNC's lawyers claimed that she erred in considering the evidence and the legal issues before her. In the petition, the party claims the Elections and Boundaries Commission should not have rejected a special ballot for its candidate that would would have broken the deadlock that emerged after the recount on election night. Justice Robertson ruled that ABC officials did not have the power to consider the ballot as it did not have the signature of the returning officer. A date for the hearing of the appeal is yet to be set. A call tonight for proper phones to be installed in the nation's prisons. And it comes from the Prison Officers Association following the murder of a prison officer in Arima last evening. Officer Kendall Smith was shot along with a friend at Samaru Village in Arima around 6 p.m. Smith and his 22-year-old friend were taken to the Arima Health Facility. However, Smith was pronounced dead. General Secretary Lester Logie says Officer Kendall was a good friend of his. He laments that since cell phone jammers were installed in prisons, officers' lives have been under threat. He blames National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines for not implementing the right policies and he wants him to resign. We are calling on the minister, 
because prison officers are not responsible for the turning on of those jammers and the turning off of those jammers. So we are calling on the Minister of National Security to implement the phone system for the inmates to speak to their families and the phones will be monitored at all the prison facilities. The association is calling on the Prime Minister as head of the National Security Council to intervene prior to the association's call. Prisons Commissioner Deopasad Ramuta had confirmed Smith's murder, but efforts to contact him on the association's concerns were futile. Calls and messages to the National Security Minister also went unanswered. Tobago recorded its second murder for the year after Akinde Bisun of Susu Lands was found dead in Old Grange. CNC3 News understands Bisun's decomposed body was found around 8 a.m. today on the side of the road. Senior Superintendent Rodel Kirk told the media the body bore several marks of violence. Police continuing their investigations, and as soon as any other information is available, we will provide an opportunity. So that is the most I can say at this point. However, sources told CNC3 News that Bisoon is known to the police and has been charged in the past for illegal drug possession. Meanwhile, investigators are yet to find a motive for the island's first murder victim, Kareem Small of Patience Hill, who was shot dead on January 2nd. We're well, still to come in the news. Mayaro mud volcano erupts, forcing the relocation of residents. Two more students beaten and attacked this week. They are now afraid to return to classes. Coming up in sport, West Indies Test Team and Cricket Australia's 11 play to a draw in their warm-up match in Adelaide. Let's continue to build with Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel. We are committed to providing quality products for all major building projects. Let's build together with rebars and beams, BRC coils and mats, RHS and angles, roofing sheets and purlins, lumber, plywood and MDF. Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel, building homes, building communities, building TNT. Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel, building value every day. Cars, sports, careers, food. We men always talk about these things, but not about our health. Did you know that testosterone is responsible for muscle mass, strength, deep voice, healthy hair growth, and a sex drive? With low testosterone, we may not achieve our potential. The good news is that Jameson Power for Men is an excellent testosterone support. Take Jameson Power for Men and perform to your max. Jameson, here for your health. Welcome back. National Nursing Association President Edie Stewart is concerned that staff and patients directly affected by roof repairs at San Fernando General Hospital are at risk of asbestos exposure. The repairs are part of major infrastructural works being undertaken by the Southwest Regional Health Authority and the Ministry of Health. Now, in response to Stewart's concerns, the SWRHA stated that the wards directly affected have been shifted and adequate safety measures have been implemented. Stewart, however, tells CNC3 News that the association has received several complaints from its members. In addition to um, asbestos uh, leaking into those units, and asbestos, as persons would know, is highly cancerous, you also have the issue where if the persons try to close the windows, preventing any breeze from coming in, those wards, not AC, would be extremely hot. They're already hot on a normal day. Stewart said while he is glad the much-needed refurbishment works have commenced, the situation could have been avoided if the SWRHA communicated with the unions. We need to begin to look at if there are some legal issues here that we need to take to the National OSHA Agency and also to see if our members have been placed at risk. So uh, we really don't want to because we really don't want to stop the, the works being conduct, conducted because it's really an uh, antiquated building. In response, the SWRH said before works began, they said patients were placed in other areas of the facility, including to the Augustus Long Hospital. The authority has also assured that proper and adequate safety measures are employed to protect both staff and clients. 
Members of the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association made an impromptu visit to the Education Ministry today to query outstanding back pay for its members. Teachers were expected to receive their payments on December 19th last year, but there was a delay for some pushing the date of payment to December 31st. Association President Martin Lumpkin said they received a correspondence from the Deputy Permanent Secretary asking for the NIS numbers of the unpaid members. He said the union already helped with names and wondered if it's a stalling tactic since they have not received any feedback on the matter. How disrespectful can you be? What madness is taking place? These, this information lies within the remit of the Ministry of Education, the employer. Why are you asking us now for that? We question the methodology and we question what the Ministry of Education is doing. And we also question where this directive is coming from. Lumpkin said while the ministry delays payment, teachers are suffering. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the Joint Trade Union Movement, Ozzy Warwick, accompanied tutor today. He said teachers should be treated with more respect. Having contributed so much to this country's development. Some of these teachers teaching for 20, 30 years, some of them retirees. You go into the bank only to find out nothing for you. That is gross disrespect right. to a group of workers in this country who have contributed significantly to the development of Trinidad and Tobago. In a response, the Education Ministry said an executive team met with Tutor today to further discuss the ongoing processing of back pay to teachers. Permanent Secretary Jacqueline Charles reassured Tutor that 97% or just over 12,000 teachers have already received their back pay. The release said this was inclusive of over 900 teachers who received their arrears outside of their December salary. Another over 1,300 teachers will receive back pay with their January salaries. The permanent secretary told the union that there are teachers with human resource issues. She said the processing of payments to retirees will commence when payments to active teachers are completed. Two students from Penal Secondary School faced a vicious lunchtime attack inside a classroom yesterday. The assault was captured on camera and shared among their peers. Ashamed and traumatized, the students say they're now fearful for it about returning to school. Today, CNC3 News caught up with the victims and their parents as they met with the principal, seeking answers and justice. Here's Radhika De Silva and Ivan Tulsi with more. Calls are being made for the Ministry of Education to investigate high teacher absenteeism at the penal secondary school after two students were brutally beaten inside a classroom. These students, one from Form 2 and the other from Form 4, now bear visible scars, bruises and scratches that tell the story of Thursday's brutal attack. <laughs> And as they went into a meeting with their parents and the principal on Friday, the students wept. I think this is just when these girls will beat me up because they're not right. Father Mukesh Dowlett says he wants a full investigation. The school will have fight on a regular basis, every day. every day. Because we can't be getting up, working hard, sending us children to school to come home like this. What are we sending them here for? We the people here for? They have security, they have the safety officers, they have the dean, they have the principal, they have teachers. We the teachers. How much time do they complain they don't have a teacher in the class? How much free period they have for the day? If they have somebody to supervise the class, will the teacher come to work? It will be children will be fighting. Mother Sherry Dowlett says her daughter has been in pain since the beating. And you had a son your child to school every day. And then to see your child getting exploited. It's not nice. Responding to the attack, Education Minister Dr. Nian Gadsby Dolly told CNC3 News that fights are routinely investigated and the principal takes the lead on this. 
CNC3 News also reached out to Twitter's President Martin Lumpkin on the allegations of high teacher absenteeism, but we are still awaiting his response. Radically Silver, CNC3 News. The firearm licensing fees increased last year, and this year, there are even stricter policies for those looking to renew their firearm users' licenses. While Police Commissioner Ola Herbert Christopher is trying to justify these new measures, many are not in support. Today, we took to the streets to hear from you whether you support a stricter renewal policy for FUL holders. No, I don't, because it seems to be a money-making business. And um, the FUL users are already trained. No, I don't. Why? Because this country is getting more and more difficult and more and more unsafe. So obviously, at a point in time, you will have to protect yourself. You can't allow the people to just come in your home. There are people with children, people with sick parents, that kind of thing. So you have to protect yourself and your family. I will say yes, because it has people just trying to get this firearm and they're using it not with purpose, right? Sometimes we will have wife and husband issues. Sometimes the husband turn the gun against the wife, the wife turn it against the husband, right? So things are getting more harder and I don't think they should do that thing. No, I do not. Because of the fact that you may not be able to afford it anymore, right? For people who already have it. Right? They may not be able to get it anymore, and um, they may be in a predicament that they will need it. So, no, I do not support that. No. Why? Because things too expensive right now, and how does country go like? It's very hard. No. Because people aren't working for enough money to put out to, to get it back. Well, in some business news, Massey Holdings has acquired a warehouse in Jacksonville, Florida. And Mario's Pizzeria temporarily closes one of its branches. Peter Christopher has all the details in tonight's Business Watch. Massey Holdings Limited spent U.S. $24.5 million or TT $166.35 million to acquire a warehouse in Jacksonville, Florida in October 2023. This purchase occurred 10 months after it paid US $47 million to purchase Rose IGA, a chain of seven supermarkets in Florida. The warehouse Massey purchased is 172,136 square feet and is located in Emerson International Industrial Park in North Jacksonville. According to a report on Thursday in the Jacksonville Daily Record, a publication dealing with business and legal news in the Florida town. Based on the amount paid, the cost per square foot of the warehouse is US $143 or TT $966. In its 2023 annual report, Massey says that the acquisition of the warehouse will facilitate the growth of its integrated retail portfolio in the United States market. Local pizza chain Mario's is advising his customers that his Val Park restaurant will be temporarily closed for reservations. In a notice issued on social media, Mario's explained, We're working to bring you an enhanced experience. We appreciate your understanding and eagerly anticipate welcoming you back in March 2024. In the meantime, customers are advised to go to the nearest Mario branch to order. The Val Park location was the first Myers outlet when it opened its doors more than 50 years ago. The business started with an investment of $4,000 and initially operated as a deli before switching its focus to pizza. And now for a look at today's energy and foreign exchange prices. Peter Christopher, CNT3 Business Watch. Well, still to come in the news, from Monday you can wear your arms out and your feet in slippers and not be denied entry into any public office. Designate, don't drink and drive. 
bumper to bumper traffic I am here and I will definitely be late because I still have to pass by the ATM to get cash for you. So say no no no. Don't put you on that. You can pay with cash. So just come straight, yeah. Ncash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Ncash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Ncash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. A high premium on quality, prices and service. The main attributes of Southern Food Basket Marketplace Point Fortin. A universe of variety with something for every shopper. Come to where the deals are bigger and better, where you shop in comfort. Southern Food Basket Marketplace, now serving with pride at Point Fortin and Environs. On Caribbean Passport, join us for Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. Witness the spectacle of the mass, the music, and the energy. Then we'll sprint over to Barbados for the Run Barbados Marathon. It's color, revelry, and tons of excitement on Caribbean Passport this Sunday. Enjoy the delicious taste of O Snacks Omega 3 Mix, a superfood snack that's oh so good for you. Natural almonds, filled with vitamin E, healthy fats, and fiber. Walnuts, help decrease inflammation, lower blood pressure, and provide diabetic support. And pop your vitamin B1 with pecans. Pumpkin seeds are loaded with iron, protein, and zinc. And dried cranberries, tart, sweet, and rich in antioxidants. Crafted especially with you in mind and as nature intended. O Snacks Omega-3 Mix, a healthier choice. Do you need tires? My name is Dale Ali from Anand Low Price Industrial Tires. We are located at South Haven Mall in DB. Feel free to visit our showroom. We here at Anand Low Price Industrial Tires are proud to bring Step Rising, Grimax and Duran to the Caribbean market. Step Rising and Grimax are our truck line of tires. Duran, our luxury sedans and SUV. All our tires have ISO, Sonicap, SIN, and Euro Highway certification. Come on down to Annan Low Price Industrial Tires at South Haven Mall in DB, where we carry a large stock and a wide variety of all the different sizes. Feel free to contact us at 292-0434 or 366-4783. This carnival season, the event you must experience is Calypso Spectacular. Through the years. Celebrating its 42nd anniversary, come enjoy some of the legendary icons like Nelson, la, 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 la. Barrett, Crazy, Chalky, Johnny King, Pink Panther, Ricky Jai, alongside top soccer stars like Ronnie McIntosh, Ola Tunji, Iowa George, Miguel Tasia. So spectacular! Premier night, Wednesday, 24 January, Napa. Saturday, January 27th, Sapa. Friday, February 2nd, Center of Excellence. Total entertainment from beginning to end. All tickets bought by Wednesday, 17, cost $15 less. Get an extra discount of $10 for online purchases at islandetickets.com. For more info, call 331-4285. Welcome back. Three families have left their homes as activity at the Cascadu mud volcano causes concern in the Miaro area. That's right. Emergency service providers rushed to the scene on Thursday after a vent of the main volcano began spewing mud. As Sasha Wilson and Kellyanne Lemacy tell us, the site has been cordoned off while the Seismic Research Center conducts its assessment. I was born and grew here. I never see something like this. 24-year-old Rocky Citron lives with his wife and three-year-old son, uncertain about what would happen to their home. We had two neighbors. We had to evacuate. It's close. CNC3 understands that event of the Cascadu mud volcano in Mayaro began spewing mud and gas on Thursday, causing panic among nearby residents. The Cicharan family and two others had to be evacuated. Yesterday evening about 5 p.m., they 
this, this eruption started. Yeah, the eruption was about 10 to 12 feet in the air, actually. Uh, no one was injured, uh, but it, it created some scare and, and uh, some panic. Now, Mayara Rio Clara Regional Corporation Chairman Raymond Corsia says the emergency services, including the Disaster Management Unit, are monitoring the site that appears to still be active. We trust in the law that it would not be a catastrophic situation that would, um, that would take lives. He says they are waiting the advice from the UE Seismic Research Center before deciding on the way forward for the families. They have started the investigating this whole process of relocation and compensation and all these, all these things. At this time now, we can't really see what will happen, but uh, the conversation has started and it will continue after the, the report is, is, um, is, is, is submitted by the University Department. In a statement, Mayaro MP Rushton Parry said the mud volcano was measuring two feet in width and four feet in length and was releasing gas in 63 second intervals. Access to the site has been restricted and at least one family is staying at an emergency shelter. The Seismic Research Center is expected to visit the site tomorrow. Sasha Wilson, CNC3 News. Well, Kalyan Hussein is standing by Kalyan, especially for the party goers. What can they expect over the weekend? Well, tonight, clear skies for the most part. If you're in Tobago, you might be dealing with a little bit of rain. Tomorrow night, you're going to be dealing with a little bit of clouds, but we will be generally settled. Sunday, if you have any party Sunday night, walk with the umbrella, don't wear white. Let's go take a look why. Because we have a share line that is moving towards Trinidad and Tobago. We have a dry air mass in place for the next 24 hours. We will be seeing an increase in moisture moving towards Trinidad and Tobago overnight tonight, which means our minimum low temperatures may not get as cool as last night, but still relatively cool with all things considered. This particular share line will bring some cloudiness, some scattered showers, with the chance for an isolated brief thunderstorm on Sunday, interrupting generally cloudy skies. Now for tonight, things remain mostly settled. Claire was still watching out for the stray isolated shower, favoring eastern parts of Trinidad and Tobago with our minimum lows between 22 and 25 degrees Celsius. It could get a bit warmer in interior areas of the country. Things remain mostly settled tonight and tomorrow as well, where mostly sunny conditions are expected to prevail. Maximum high temperatures coming in between 31 and 32 degrees, a bit warmer across western parts of Trinidad. By the evening hours, though, we will be seeing an increase in cloudiness, especially across Tobago and then across northern and eastern Trinidad as the night progresses. And that's because that share line will be moving in, leading to a generally cloudy and potentially rainy Sunday across the entire country. Now, how much rain can we expect? Well, forecast models suggest anywhere between 5 millimeters of rain, especially across western parts of Trinidad, up to 25 millimeters of rain. That's about an inch, and if that falls in an isolated heavy shower, there is a chance for street or flash flooding. Most of the rain, though, is forecast to remain across eastern coastal areas of Trinidad as a result of strong westerly wind shear, keeping heavy showers across eastern coastal areas of both islands. Now, for marine areas, seas this weekend continue to remain moderate with waves up to 2.5 meters, especially in northeastern coastal areas and in sheltered areas up to 1.5 meters. We still have a combination of spring tides and elevated winds affecting our marine areas. So all marine interests still advised to exercise caution. And taking a look at the extended weather forecast, while we already talked at length about the rain on Sunday, things will gradually settle as we head into the first half of next week by Wednesday, some dry air returns. We'll see those sunny skies back again across Trinidad and Tobago. So again, Sunday's the day for rainfall. It's dry season, but the dry season's also never without rain. All right, thank you so much, Colleen. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Designate. Don't drink and drive. Visit Tire Clinic Marketing, New Truck and OTR Tire Service Center at number 30 and 32 Montrose Main Road, Chabonas. Call today at 665-8973 or 672-3419. Alignment services available. Tire Clinic Marketing, Truck and OTR Service Center. A tire for every need. 
cold or flu? Take Panadol Multi-Symptoms. Relief in minutes. Seven golden flu symptoms. Panadol. Release starts here. Faithful from day one. This bread can do no wrong. Real and homemade, just like the old days. It's genuine, it's sure. This bread you must adore. It's a slice of love in so many ways. Over 65 years of experience nourishing the nation, Linda's is the first name in bread. Do you need tires? My name is Deal Ali from Anand Low Price Industrial Tires. We are located at South Haven Mall in DB. Feel free to visit our showroom. We here at Anand Low Price Industrial Tires are proud to bring Step Rising, Grimax, and Duran to the Caribbean market. Step Rising and Grimax are our truck line of tires. Do run our luxury sedans and SUV. All our tires have ISO, Sonicap, SIN, and Euro Highway certification. Come on down to Annan Low Price Industrial Tires at South Haven Mall in DB, where we carry a large stock and a wide variety of all the different sizes. Feel free to contact us at 292-0434 or 366-4783. Premier League is back on Seasport. Catch the live action this Saturday when Chelsea go head-to-head -head with visitors Fulham at Stamford Bridge, followed by an action-packed clash at St. James's Park as Newcastle United hosts the defending champions Manchester City. And on Sunday, Old Trafford will be rocking as Manchester United look to prove a point against rivals Tottenham. Sign up now at Seasport.tv or download the Seasport app to catch all the action. Sea Sport, the best way to see sports. Welcome back. With a new dress code policy for government officers taking effect on Monday, the public administration minister assures that their goal is not to turn people away. But Minister Alison West is urging people to abide by the new policy, which now allows visitors to visit government officers wearing slippers and sleeveless. The minister held a media conference today to show the public what you can and cannot wear. Kim Marie Fletcher brings us this story. It's a good thing because um, I have a kind of sweating problem. Having on a lot of clothes has make me sweat a lot. So if I could just come with a little vest, and not a short pants, but you know, a long pants appropriate, yeah. But um, there will be some people will be advantage in this um, new ruler. They will come half naked. So they have to know what they're doing with that. Like Candy Charles, some people are now questioning if the new rules which goes into effect from January 15th would be abused as the new dress code at government offices will be adjusted to include a more relaxed fit. And Minister of Public Utilities Alison West is also hoping people don't abuse the policy. What we're asking you not to do is to not have vulgar displays of in respect of your clothing or in respect of any signage or pictures or whatever on your clothing. No swimwear, no sheer clothing, no bareback, no vulgar obscene messages or images and no gang symbols. West said 400 senior customer service representatives of various ministries were trained on how to ensure compliance to the dress code and assured that no one will be turned away for non-compliance once they have a valid explanation. According to the new rules, clients and visitors entering government offices, including ministry buildings, license and passport offices, will be allowed to wear sleeveless clothing, distressed jeans, mid-thigh pants, as well as skirts and slippers. However, the rules in place for photo identification still apply. West noted, however, that there was never a standardized policy in place. The policy before was a combination of archaic and rigid. What we have tried to do is introduce a more relaxed policy to accommodate the provision of services. Now, the news of this new policy comes as music to the ears of persons wanting to visit government buildings such as this. As many say, it's been a long time coming. I feel good about it because sometimes you, you, you're working and you, you don't have on a, 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 um, 
long pants and you want to run in there to get something as you're in town, now you have to go home and get clothes and come back into town. So I feel good about it. I like how they bring it on. Real nice. The minister said these rules do not apply to public schools, courts, community centers, hospitals or health centers. Many persons say they're hoping that other offices can adopt the same policy. K. Marie Fletcher, CNC3 News. Big change there. Correct. Well, Jasmine is standing by Jazzy. A lot happening in sports this weekend. What's happening? Yeah, we have a lot happening. Jesse will give you the full round But before that, two of the world's most recognized football teams completed some tidy business today. News from the camps of Brazil and Chelsea. And as Jesse was alluding to, the sporting calendar is heating up all of the must-attend events in our sport wrap when we return. It's another action-packed Premier League weekend on Seasport. This Saturday, kickoff begins at the Emirates, where Arsenal are set to host visitors Crystal Palace. Then later, it's a trip to the GTEC Community Stadium as Brentford go up against rivals Nottingham Forest. And on Sunday, Sheffield United play at home to West Ham, followed by a trip to the Vitality Stadium, where Bournemouth will be looking to cause an upset to a high-flying Liverpool. Sign up now at cSport.tv or download the cSport app to catch all the action. Seasport, the best way to see sports. Magical Expressions Limited is the largest local importer and distributor of fresh cut stems, offering the widest range of beautiful flowers at the most affordable prices. We're celebrating Valentine's Day. For exclusive offers, call us at 7016488 or visit our website to order. With the live multivitamins by Nature's Way, you won't be defined by time. You'll own every minute of it. Discover how you can age vibrantly with Alive. Designate. Don't drink and drive. Sleep peacefully on your period with Always Night that gives you three times protection. It absorbs your flow, has an anti-leakage system, and has a perfect fit for your body. Meet the Always Night products for a three times night protection. This carnival season, the event you must experience is Calypso Spectacular. Through the years. Celebrating its 42nd anniversary. Come enjoy some of the legendary icons like Nelson, Barrett, Crazy, Chalky, Johnny King, Pink Panther, Ricky Jai, alongside top soccer stars like Ronnie McIntosh, Ola Tunji, Iowa George, Miguel Tasia. So spectacular. Premier night, Wednesday, 24 January, Napa. Saturday, January 27th, Sapa. Friday, February 2nd, Center of Excellence. Total entertainment from beginning to end. All tickets bought by Wednesday, 17th, cost $15 less. Get an extra discount of $10 for online purchases at islandeticets.com. For more info, call 331-4285. Plumbing problems? Don't guess. Call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Proud to be serving Trinidad and Tobago for over 20 years. We do it all. Maintenance and repairs, new construction, sewer lines, inspection, drain cleaning, leak detection. We are licensed and insured. So call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Welcome back. Just a quick update from TTPFL action to get us started. Real Gill and Andre Etienne scored on either side of the half as Club Sandu and Heritage Point Fortin Civic Center shared the points in week eight of the Trinidad and Tobago Football League this afternoon. Defense Force FC and La Hockata Rangers, they are currently in action and they went into the halftime tied goalless before 2023 MVP Justin Shiggy Garcia put the Army men ahead in the 67th minute. Over in Bacalet, Tobago, 1976 FC Phoenix, they led Central FC 3-0 at the midway mark. Full highlights of some of these matches in tomorrow's sportscast. 
Faruga Secondary and Medical Ministries received some validation from the SSFL's arbitration committee when it submitted its report on protests involving both institutions. The report found that the presence of representatives from the Central, South and North zones on both the credentials and disciplinary committees could be perceived as a conflict of interest. The report recommended an independent disciplinary committee review the processes of the credential committee in the 2023 registration of both school teams. The arbitrators also suggest a review of the league's constitution and an overhaul of the league's registration process. It added that learning of these issues at the end of the season or when a protest is lodged is, quote, extremely unfair to the schools involved. A help desk for schools is another of the recommendations made. When contacted today, though, SS SFL President Mariri Gonzalez chose to reserve his comments until after an emergency SSFL executive meeting on Saturday. We'll continue to follow that story th straight through to its end. Cricket now, Joshua De Silva smashed a 158-ball century, and Kevem Hodge was a run short of a ton of his own as the West Indians drew their tour match with a Cricket Australia 11 today. Leading by 215 after bowling the host team out for 174, De Silva plundered 15 fours on his way to 105. Hodge was bowled by Doug Warren on 99 as the West Indies declared on 315 for five. Now chasing 392 for victory, the Cricket Australia 11 reached 149 for 5 at the close of play. The West Indies will now aim to build on this result, taking on Australia in the first test match on Tuesday. The appointment of Englishman Johnny Grave to serve as managing director of this year's T20 World Cup has risen a few eyebrows. It means a challenging dual role for Grave, who also serves as Cricket West Indies CEO. Chris Dering, 2007 ICC Men's World Cup Managing Director, is one of those uncertain about whether the overlapping responsibilities will produce optimal results. Appearing on the Mason and Guest radio show on Voice of Barbados Radio this week, 2007 ICC Men's World Cup CEO and Managing Director Chris Daring expressed concerns about Johnny Graves' ability to serve in a dual capacity after the Cricket West Indies CEO was also appointed Managing Director of this June's T20 World Cup. Daring's apprehension was based on this. There are two very important aspects to, to the World Cup. Well, obviously, one is being able to to host the event in a manner that will satisfy all the host, host uh, obligations, which is absolutely critical. But the second important part is having a team that um, participates well in it. Because if you look at all global events, football World Cups, cricket World Cups, the, the spirit and the energy in a, in a tournament can dissipate very quickly. Daring's theory was that managing a World Cup as well as managing the operations of the host board was near impossible. But Grave, who has been CWI CEO since 2017, said his experience in a similar situation when the Caribbean hosted the 2022 Under-19 World Cup should serve him in good stead. Yeah, it's not something that I'm un unduly concerned about. Um, and we've mm. got a very experienced team under... The leadership of Fawaz Bash as the tournament director, who was the tournament director for the under 19s. And while I accept what Chris is saying, it, operationally and logistically, it's, it's, it is similar in that respect, um, clearly in terms of traveling supporters and the commercial side and opportunity and the profile of the event, it's different. But at least mm. from a cricket ops perspective and logistics, it's, it's a pretty similar event. Daring still was not so convinced. The, the reality may be that he's fully on top of everything, on, on top of both. The, but the perception, if the West Indies doesn't do well, mm. it, it's hard to get away from the perception. Hey, maybe, maybe he should have been focusing on the West Indies team. But dual role or not, Daring concluded. Johnny, any sort of advice, critique or whatever that takes place before the World Cup, I, you know, it's like a cricket team. We talk about all the different strategies. People have different ideas. But once that match, once the umpire calls play, it's everybody in the Caribbean has to be on board. Now, after just two days in this year's TCCB North-South Classic, North captain Vikash Mohan is putting in a man-of-the-match performance, following up on his figures of 4 for 56 to help dismiss the South team for 274 on day one. Mohan led North's repairs after the early dismissals of Camilo Karambokas for 16 and Isaiah Raja for 12. That left the North team at 61 for two. Mohan and Amir Jangu formed a partnership of 180 for the third wicket. 
with more than 100 coming off 195 deliveries. He was dismissed, however, on 115. In carrying on the fight for the North team, Ami Jangu lived a charmed life in the nervous 90s, but he was on 106 not out at the close of play. The North team reached 271. They are trailing by three runs heading into day three. Nikolai Blackman has booked a spot in tonight's Tear Pro Swim Series men's 200-meter freestyle sea final. Earlier today, Blackman won preliminary heat number seven out of ten at the Alan Jones Intercollegiate Aquatic Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. From lane seven, the 18-year-old University of Tennessee swimmer led from start to finish at his home pool. In the end, he qualified second overall behind Heat 9's Thomas Heelman. Brazil's Seleção has identified a new permanent head coach, and Chelsea sews up the signing of one of the Caribbean's fine young talents. Here's tonight's International Roundup. Brazil has appointed a new men's national team manager in Doraville Jr. Jr. will replace Fernando Diniz, who was fired last week amid poor results and a political crisis within Brazil's footballing body. Junior and his former club, Sao Paulo, announced that he was leaving to take over the national team, calling it a dream come true. Staying with football, Chelsea have now officially completed the signing of teenage striker Dujan Richards. The Jamaican international has moved to Stamford Bridge from the Phoenix All-Stars Football Academy in Kingston. Richards agreed a pre-contract deal with Chelsea last March, and a transfer was then confirmed over the summer with the player expected to join the Blues after his 18th birthday. And to the NBA, where the Oklahoma City Thunder dominated the Portland Trailblazers last evening, winning by 62 points to record the biggest win in franchise history and move into a tie for first place in the Western Conference. The 139-77 victory tied the fifth biggest blowout in NBA history, eclipsing OKC's previous franchise record margin of victory of 45 points. Rajiv Suratsing, CNC3 Sport. All right, and time now to see what the weekend has to offer in our sport wrap. The first scrum of the year will come together on Saturday when the Tobago Rugby Classic gets going at Shaw Park. It will continue all weekend long, so go out and see the Ruggers in action. The North-South Classic will continue with day three and four over the weekend at the National Cricket Centre in Bahamain, Cuba. First ball is at 9.30 a.m., so don't be late. The Republic Bank Schools Water Polo League will splash off at the Flying Fish Pool on Saturday from 6 p.m. and from 10 a.m. on Sunday, so go out and support in your numbers. Staying in the pool, the Manta Bay Swimming Club will host an ASAT National Long Course Qualifier at the Aquatic Centre in Coover from 9 a.m. on Sunday. Courts All Sectors Netball League will have matches from midday on Saturday and it will run all day long at the Eastern Regional Sporting Complex in Tagarigua. Go see the best of the best battle. Staying on court, the Secondary Schools Basketball League will have action in the South Zone at the Bronx Basketball Court in Sando, with games from 6 and 7 p.m. on both days. It's your chance to watch future NBA prospects. The Trinidad and Tobago Cycling Federation Road Cycling Series will continue at the foreshore on Sunday from 7 a.m. So remember to share the road and look out for the nation's cyclists. Well, I'm Casting Cupid, and that's all you need to know where to go, what to do over the weekend in your CNC3 Sports Wrap. Thank you, Caston. Well, we end with a peach of a finish tonight in our Sport High. Jamal Musiala is a young man at the height of his powers. A brace against Hoffenheim helped keep Bayern in the race. But this finish, taken in traffic and leaving everyone on red, gets better every time you see it. German engineering at its finest, Starboy touches for FC Hollywood, earns Jamal tonight's CNC3 Sport High. impressive yeah really great goal from the young man all right thank you so much Jassy. let's take a short break we'll be right back like many others trying to save on carnival gabby thought she should go Done. for 50 percent off makeup <laughs> what about the other side well dicey 50 percent off of her so you know you know no makeup artist we don't know what we do know is the savviest savings for Carnival are at KFC. Get a Chap Chap box, one piece chicken, one regular fries, and a biscuit for only $25.
Attention all bakers, doubles vendors and roti makers. Try our high quality bromate free all purpose and whole wheat flour. Low price and conveniently packaged in 2 pounds, 2 kg, 10 kg and 25 kg bags. For wholesale and retail prices, contact Shikwisho Limited at 665-3336 or 4808715 or visit us at Warrenville Canopia. Shikwisho Limited, quality you can trust. On Caribbean Passport, join us for Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. Witness the spectacle of the mass, the music, and the energy. Then we'll sprint over to Barbados for the Run Barbados Marathon. It's color, revelry, and tons of excitement on Caribbean Passport this Sunday. Don't drink and drive. The Premier League is back on Seasport. Catch the live action this Saturday when Chelsea go head-to-head -head with visitors Fulham at Stamford Bridge, followed by an action-packed clash at St. James's Park as Newcastle United hosts the defending champions Manchester City. And on Sunday, Old Trafford will be rocking as Manchester United look to prove a point against rivals Tottenham. Sign up now at seasport.tv or download the Seasport app to catch all the action. Seasport. The best way to see sports. It's another action-packed Premier League weekend on Seasport. This Saturday, kickoff begins at the Emirates, where Arsenal are set to host visitors Crystal Palace. Then later, it's a trip to the GTEC Community Stadium as Brentford go up against rivals Nottingham Forest. And on Sunday, Sheffield United play at home to West Ham, followed by a trip to the Vitality Stadium, where Bournemouth will be looking to cause an upset to a high-flying Liverpool. Sign up now at seasport.tv or download the Seasport app to catch all the action. Seasport, the best way to see sports. Welcome back. 15 students of the Marabella South Secondary School graduated from the Heroes Foundation Development Program today. The program is a three-year youth intervention initiative aimed at developing our nation's youth to become positive and purpose-driven citizens. During the program, students are given career guidance, skill development, and youth-led projects. At the graduation ceremony held at the Tattle Building in Porto, Spain today, both parents and graduates were excited to share the many benefits of the program. The Heroes Development Program is a three-year journey and the past two years have been exciting. Our discussions on values stood out to me because I like being able to define my values and who I am as a young leader. I have seen my son grow because he's on the spectrum, he's very shy, he's very reserved, but he has grown. Heroes Foundation, I wish that they could be in all schools. The Heroes program is a partnership between Ansel McCall and the Heroes Foundation with support from UNICEF. Well, Nyla Blackman's seventh installment of her Soka Origins Carnival show was a free-flowing and almost flawless execution by the artists and some of the genre's top performers last Sunday. A party start crew was outside on the south side at Sapa for the show and almost put their finger to the pulse of the people at the Zale Kula Fet for a feel of what Soka songs are trending. The Party Start, brought to you by KFC, finger licking good, Be Mobile, Life is On, and White Oak, for the culture. It's sale. And they say it's a bad behavior zone, so let me see how bad they're really behaving. They stop number two, let's go, let's go. To the end, like Aisha, Nisha, Keisha, Ben right over, Rishima, Latoya, Charisma, Ben right over, Tatiana, Shinika, Janisha, Ben right over. Listen, if you're them in with a A. What you not like? Let me see, let me see, let me see. Good luck, my team. But I like all the tunes, you too, boy. But I like the version before he recorded when he was playing on the piano. Hey, 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 hey. What tune you feeling for 2024? 
it's have a, um, it's have a new GBM where I can't remember the lyrics of it or the rhythm of it right now. Cause I go down, go down, go down in this. That is it. That you is. wanna sing it? Let's sing that on this rhythm. Okay, on this spot. Every girl just go down, go down, go down in the center, go down, go down, go down in the center. Early every morning, waiting for the sun to rise. Hey, more down on an oil long, most likely I'm in disguise. Three, one. No one wanna get on mad. Two, no one wanna jam in the center. Three, girl, away your belt and back. Four, I wanna jam on your bumper. When I get this feeling, this feeling is cause trouble. Hey, let me start the back on up. My name is Alvin McFarlane. It real nice. Hey, if you are, I'm Pastor Cupid. And I am Jassy Marie. Now, welcome to the party, son. Here what? We're in Southland. We're in Sapa. And we're at Nyla Blackman's Soka Eden. Yeah, Soka Origins. It's been a really jam-packed show so far. A lot of our guest appearances. But let me tell you about it. Let's take the stage side. Let's go. Coordination. Um, my team, my management, especially Anson and Keon, pulled in the reins. It was a lot of work, but me and my creative team, my designers, my stylists, everything from top to bottom was a lot of work and just like you had to focus, you know what I mean? Christmas time, traveling still, doing all of that. It was a lot, but definitely I'm so happy. I'm so happy with the results. I'm so happy with everything, how it went down. I just want to say big up to all the artists that came out, took a plane, flew down, got here on time. The vibes was literally amazing. Bad girl, I mean that. See, I'm going to girl stock, Ashley, and you're watching CNC3. Okay. The Party Start, brought to you by KFC, Finger Licking Good, Be Mobile, Life Is On, and White Oak, for the culture. Okay, and looking forward to seeing many more new artists out yeah. in the carnival season. They've certainly been uh, giving their contributions wholeheartedly this season okay. so far, and long may that continue. Yeah, but you know, we just looked at the party stuff. What about um, having a birthday party this weekend? Right. <laughs> you know, there's somebody <laughs> celebrating their birthday tomorrow, just yeah. around there. Happy birthday. I'll be 30 something. Happy birthday. <laughs> right, so you know. you're, as, you're as young as you feel, Jesse. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> All right, well, as we leave you, let's remind you to stay connected with us on our social media platforms. There you'll find these stories, the latest updates and exclusive content. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news on CNC3. Thanks for watching. I'm Ria Rambley. I'm Jesse Ramdew. I am Jassy Marie. And I'm Colleen Hussain. Have a great weekend.